Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing Dune. This film was directed by Denis Villeneuve. This is of course the highly anticipated film adaptation of the classic novel, and I've actually never read the book, but I do know a bit about it, and I know that it is a very kind of expansive, very dense sort of work, and I've always seen it as unfilmable, to be honest. I think the only way for it to really work is if you really stripped it back and really changed it up uh, a bit. Um, so. When these big films come out that are adaptations of, of this magnitude, I kind of, you know, I take it with a grain of salt. You know that pacing will likely be an issue and it'll be convoluted, and yet I find myself always very interested to see all the different uh, cinematic interpretations. Where they fail and where they succeed. I may not know the book, but I do know the cinematic history, certainly. Um, Alejandro Jodorowsky, of course, was uh, originally going to make the film and it was going to star the likes of uh, Mick Jagger and Orson Welles, Salvador Dali. It was going to have a, a score by Pink Floyd. And if you know Jodorowsky, and if you don't, I beg you to uh, uh, watch some of his films. Uh, his interpretation of Dune would have been a batshit psychedelic ride, baby. Would it have been a complete fail as a Dune adaptation? Probably, but you know, might as well have fun while you're doing it. But they eventually gave it to Lynch because of his success with a more mainstream film like The Elephant Man. Um, and of course, at the time that Dune came out in 1984, it was poorly received. Um, but it has since become a kind of beloved cult classic, despite how much of a train wreck it is. I did review the film, so you can watch that, I think like maybe a year ago. But personally, I really, I really like the, the David Lynch film, flaws and all. Even if it was, you can tell it was a nightmare to get made and he did not have a uh, final cut, they went way over budget, and you know, there's constant like wrestling between Lynch and the studio to fight for control. All this stuff is happening and it, it really shows. The movie, I like to say, is very blotchy because it's very strong in certain sections and other parts just feel completely slapped together and, and laughable. But overall, I don't know, it's just a personal uh, opinion, but uh, I, I find it interesting even if it is a, a total catastrophe in sections of it. You know, there is something about Lynch, he is just very unique. And so naturally, I appreciate his point of view. Um, you know, there is kind of a dark, psychedelic, twisted um, feel to the movie, but it also has those those interesting shades of uh, of camp and homoeroticism on the verge of farce at times. You know, it, it echoes a lot of that spirit of the midnight movie. And of course, Lynch and Jodorowsky were uh, midnight movie icons in the 1970s. But I do admit, at the same time, part of me really does crave a serious version of Dune, one that can really be taken seriously all the way through as an epic. And I, I know that that is asking a lot, but, you know, I think the material uh, deserves that. So naturally, when I heard that Villeneuve was going to be taking on the project, I got very excited. It's a good choice. You know, he, he did wonders, I think, with Blade Runner 2049, especially uh, aesthetically, and um, I also reviewed that one. It was very tastefully done. And, uh, you know, I thought that he could take Dune and bring it a little closer to uh, baseline there, create something maybe a little more sleek, more clean, but more focused. And you know, like, his emphasis on scale and, and, and world building is on point, especially for these times. And uh, when I saw the film, it was almost exactly what I expected it to be. Um, overall, it, it is gorgeous looking, absolutely spectacular. It's really rich in composition. Um, the special effects at times are dazzling to look at. It looks extremely expensive, and that, that is a, a compliment to the film, um, because you just don't see that very often, as I've said, anymore. Um, it did nothing to convince me that the, that the book is filmable. Um, I still think that they're biting off way more than they can chew. It's a lot easier to follow, but sometimes it is kind of nonsensical. And it is clunky, for sure, very, very heavy on exposition, which, you know, you do expect. But just in terms of cohesion, you know, I think it's much better than the Lynch version, and uh, there was a lot to be improved on. And yet I still find myself shamelessly and perhaps naively uh, defending the Lynch version just for uh, personal reasons, because, you know, I think I'm just more fascinated, as I said, with that juxtaposition of this kind of eccentric type of person being placed into this world where suddenly they have control of a big uh, motion picture like this. It's ballsy and it's much more likely to fall flat on its face for sure. Um, and this is a situation where if you disagree with me, you know, I'm not going to fight you or anything. I'll be like, yeah, you know, absolutely you make sense if, if you prefer the uh, Villeneuve version. I'll tell you the things I do like about this film a lot. Just like uh, Blade Runner 2049, 
Villeneuve is able to create the type of accessible art house epic that we we just we rarely ever see anymore. And it reminds me a lot of those epics that we did see more in the golden age. We saw them in the 1950s, uh, the 1960s. I'm thinking more like like the biblical epics, the gladiator epics. And, you know, this does, it really does have the spirit of like a D.W. Griffith film or a Cecil B. DeMille film. And it does it all in a very classy uh, sort of way. And Villeneuve isn't interested in cheap shots or gimmicks in the ways that we normally see them. Uh, he's more about kind of the nuance and bringing out subtleties of an experience. And for me, I may not get a lot of texture from his films, but I do feel Often I do feel the weight of all of these environments and you feel yourself kind of being allured forward, you know, slowly being drawn into it. And at times that can be so exhilarating just as an experience. Um, and it, it reminds me of the times when movies were an event where people went to the movies. And it reminds me of the possibilities we have now, even if the risk is perhaps greater, uh, especially from a from a financial standpoint. But um, Ultimately, this movie does cut off kind of abruptly, and yes, I know that it is just the first half, um, but it does make it difficult to talk about in terms of merit because it is just, you know, it is kind of half of a film. It'll be much easier to judge, I think, when it all comes together. So I feel like I'm sort of reviewing like a fragment or like a partial piece of something that is not whole. And I do wish that this one overall had a more conclusive tone to it. I know it's supposed to be just right in the middle and it's going to continue, but I like the idea of kind of bringing something together, you know, like a full movie, and then kind of preparing us for what we have in store for the future. I will say though, I, I wasn't as taken with the film overall as I was uh, 2049, just aesthetically. I felt that that film was richer and bolder and more thought, more well thought out, I think, in terms of the world building, at least it seemed that way. Uh, but, you know, I will say this, if you did watch my review for it, one of my nitpicks was that even though the minimalism is really beautiful, there is something about it that is perhaps too minimalistic. But at the same time, I missed a lot of the, the grime and the textures, the wetness, more of that authenticity, uh, whereas this new one felt cold and, and more removed. And again, I really like it. I just wanted a little bit more of that uniqueness that I got in the original, which I, I definitely preferred aesthetically. And I have to admit, I have a lot of those same complaints about Dune, but, but more so. There are moments, like I said, where you just the heft and the weight of everything. You really feel it. You feel it in this world. Uh, you know, I look at some of these shots and it, it's reminding me of like Lawrence of Arabia, or as I said, like a big, like intolerance or, or something like that. But it does become too cold at times. And even though it is mixing an idea of like practical effects and CGI, which I really appreciate, um, when it becomes less practical and more CGI, just unfortunately, I feel like no matter what, no matter how advanced we get, it's still you don't feel it in the same ways. You don't feel like the rust and the creaking, the heaviness, the clunkiness of those metal machines and like ships and hangers being lifted. There's something about CGI, no matter how advanced we get, there's something about it where it feels very floaty and weightless. And when you're going for something like this, especially with the worms, I know this is going to be a controversial opinion, but I think there are some things that I prefer about the worms in the Lynch one, even though, you know, the special effects and everything are, are not near what this is. This one is extraordinary, the way that these worms look. And yet there was something about the movement of them that I didn't feel in the way that I feel in, in the Lynch version. It feels more like Shadow of the Colossus. I love just how slow and big everything is in that game. And that's kind of what I expect more from uh, Denis Villeneuve. But I don't know, you just want a lumbering sense of, of something. And uh, it just felt just overall, just a little bit glossy and um, slick for me, but still really, really amazing. I commend, you know, the artists behind it. I'm just going to judge Villeneuve a little bit more harshly. And I also think, and even just watching the trailers, I could already tell this, I think I, I prefer aspects, even if it is hit or miss, I prefer aspects of, of the Lynch version, just um, in terms of wardrobe, in terms of um, set design. It holds up really well, and I think there's more of a, a distinctness. It feels like a real world, whereas this one I think is maybe too sterile, it's too lacking in imagination. I don't feel a world that has existed for many, many years and we've watched it age over time. I just want a bit more tread in those tires, I think, to, to break up the monotony. But part of that is just stylistically, it's a stylistic choice. We're gonna take Dune and kind of spritz it up, clean it up a little bit and polish it, make it more accessible, and that's all stuff that I, I can appreciate. I just want a little more 
grit and grime there. But of course, you know, there's one aspect of this that I really, really hated, and it is, of course, the, uh, the music. And of course, everyone knows, if you watch my channel regularly, my history with them. Um, Mr. Hans Zimmer. As usual, it hurt me, and it really, I think, hurt the project overall. He went for the same sort of hack, uh, cheap gimmicks that he always does, you know, very heavy, overbearing music that brings out no textures, brings out no form, and already the film has just such a massive quality to it. So, you know, it's, it's very much a, a literal sort of creative decision as are all of Hans Zimmer's decisions, it seems. His music really just drowns out the spaces and, and brings everything down rather than enhancing it, as a good score should. Um, there's a lot of like the same sort of stuff, a lot of distorted horns that are kind of droning down like that, and there's just a really ugly sort of shallow electronic sound that does remind me of dad rock. And oh yeah, 2001 called, they want their the worst parts and the most dated parts and the thinnest parts of the Gladiator soundtrack back. It's the era of the exotic solo woman singing for a dramatic effect. Um, again, I'll never understand why he is in so, such high demand nowadays for the big films. And as I've said a million times, I think there's so many, if you're gonna go for the more kind of futuristic ambient sort of minimalist score, which Personally, I think it's getting a little bit tired, but um, if you want to go that direction, there are a lot of film composers who can do it much better. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a mixed bag overall for me, um, but that is pretty much what I expected once the trailers came out. I got a good sense of what I was going to get here. Um, I do have my issues with it, but overall, I did enjoy it. I did, and I think that people should absolutely see this movie because of just how impressive it is, just as a as a piece of spectacle. While it is overstuffed for sure, there is more clarity here, which was desperately needed, I think. I just think if you're really wanting to go for how I think this, this material should be treated, uh, you've got to go more for big scope, but kind of strip back more to the basic elements in order for a movie to make uh, sense here. But again, I expect all these flaws. I, it's still an unfilmable book in my opinion, but you know, it is enjoyable to see the different cinematic interpretations and the scale of them as well. So it is totally worth it to see because it does, as I said, remind you of those big movie events that we used to uh, love. But that is my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to plug my website as always. Uh, it is deepfocuslens.com. I am an artist and I do commission portraits and I sell prints of my work. If that's something that you're interested in, you can always go to the shop below. Also, if you have any questions about a, a commission or a print, you can always email me. I don't bite. My email is in the uh, description box below. Also, I want to give a shout out to my patrons who have been absolutely wonderful. If you are interested in supporting, the link for that is below, as well as the rest of my social media information. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.